Good morning, children. We are going to begin with another chapter of your science book called Fiber to Fabric, which is going to tell you very simply about the clothes we wear and from where and how we get them. First of all, I am going to tell you a story about the history of clothing. So, children, relax, sit back and listen to and enjoy the story. Early man used to live in the forest like animals. He used to hunt for animals with stones or a spear or bhala made of a pointed stone to kill animals and eat their raw flesh. Early man slowly learned to wear clothes. In ancient times, People used to cover their bodies with bark and big leaves of trees or animal skins and furs. People used to just wrap these around various parts of the body in different ways. After people began to settle down in different communities and with the development of agriculture, they learned to weave twigs and grasses into mats, baskets and other utility items. In India, cotton was grown near the river Ganga during the Harappan period as early as 2500 BC. BC is the time before Christ. It is measured in years. In ancient Egypt, cotton and flax were grown near the river Nile, which is their longest and biggest river and was used for making clothes. At that time, stitching was not known to people. They simply used to drape a big piece of cloth around them. This is how Dhotis worn by men and saris worn by women originated in India. These were known as unstitched clothes. Invention of the sewing needle in 4000 BC led to the stitching of fabric into various types of dresses such as shirts, pants, suits, blouses, and skirts. Even today, fabrics like sari, dhoti, and lungi and turban are worn as unstitched clothes. Let us come to the uses of clothes now. Clothes protect us from extreme climatic conditions like heat, cold, wind, and rain. They also protect us from dust, insect, thorns, etc. They help us to maintain body temperature according to the weather. They help us to look smart. Won't you like to look smart, children? And enhance our personality. Children, these are some children wearing uniforms. Have a look at them. Some clothes tell us about the organization that we are working for or studying. For example, uniforms worn by the police, army, navy, air force, pilots and air hostess. And of course, school uniform worn by students like you. When we wear such uniforms, people instantly recognize us and they and we leave our language, culture, caste, creed and religion behind and become one. Now we are going to know about fiber and its types. Different types of fabrics are made from different materials. Fabric is prepared from fiber. A fiber is a thread or a filament 
from which a cloth or textile is formed. There are two types of fibers, natural fibers or fibers obtained from nature or natural sources, synthetic fibers, fibers which are man-made and made in factories from chemicals by complex processes. Some examples of natural fibers are cotton, flax, jute, hemp and linen. Some examples of synthetic fibers are polyester, nylon, acrylic and terylene. The material used to make clothes is called fabric. Natural fibers are divided into two groups, plant fibers or fibers obtained from plants such as cotton, flax, jute and hemp. Animal fibers or fibers obtained from animals, they are silk and wool. Your first activity is collect samples of different fabrics made from natural and synthetic sources. You can stick it in a project file or scrapbook later. Let me show you some fabric made from natural and synthetic fibers. Here they are. This is a sari made out of cotton. This is a jute bag. This is a woolen cardigan. This is a chunni or dupatta made of silk. And this is the same made out of synthetic or nylon fibers. You are going to learn about the advantages of natural and synthetic fibers at a later class. Now let us learn of some about some natural fibers such as jute. Jute fiber is obtained from the stem of the jute plant. It is a cheap, coarse, biodegradable fiber. You can see this bag made out of jute fiber, children. It is a very decorative and unique bag. About 80% of the world's best jute comes from Bangladesh. Now let us learn some conditions for growing jute. Jute grows best in warm and humid climate with a rainfall of over 150 centimeters. That is a lot of rainfall. The temperature required to grow jute is 24 to 37 degrees centigrade. It can grow in many soil types, but the most preferable or ideal soil is alluvial soil or the soil which is found near rivers. It is cultivated in the rainy season. Jute plants can grow up to a height of 2.5 to 3 meters. To obtain good quality of jute, harvesting is done at the flowering stage. Jute fibers are stuck to each other by a sticky substance. To separate the fibers and obtain jute, a process called retting is used. The stems of harvested plants are dipped in stagnant or standing water like the water in ponds for 15 to 20 days. The stems rot due to the action of bacteria present in the water. The fibers are then separated from the rotten stems by beating with sticks and later by hand. This process is called retting. 
the jute fibers thus obtained are washed, dried, cleaned, and made into small bundles. Look at this band. It is made from jute ropes obtained from jute fiber. The uses of jute are jute yarn is used to make packaging material, clothes, sacks and ropes. It is used to make rugs, stools, carpets and curtains. Jute based jewellery is also used these days. Refined jute is used to make dresses, bags, etc. These days, designers are using jute material to make extremely sophisticated clothes as the ones you are going to see right now. The legwear is made of jute. There is a worksheet for you. There are short answer questions. Do answer them. You can write them down or take a screenshot. Number one, the material used to make clothes is called dash. Number two, a part, jute is the outer covering of the coconut, true or false. Give reasons for your answer. B part, Describe the process of obtaining jute fiber from the jute plant. C. Mention some uses of jute. How do clothes enhance our personality? Think and give reasons is question 3. Question 4 is why do we need to wear clothes? And question 5. Is sterilene a natural Fiber. Give reasons. Now, children, we are coming to the end of the lesson. You have also been given an activity earlier. Keep your materials ready so that you can complete it when time comes. I take your leave now. We are going to be back with more such interesting classes. Bye bye.